Inversion of the yield curve also spells future recession. This week, very similar to two weeks ago, um, the market is continues to be dominated by the debt ceiling talks currently going on in Washington, or at least I hope they are now that it's 630 in um, Washington, D.C. The issue right now, I think, as everybody understands, is will the um, two sides get together and agree to avoid a uh, default on any interest payments and or more importantly, payments to all those government workers that work for um, various departments in the federal government? Um, I think it should be clear to everybody that the way should this happen and money's not, no deal does come to fruition by uh, June 1st. And remember, even if they agree, they got to put Congress together and do things. So the very worst I think that would happen is there would be a delay. In other words, it wouldn't happen on June 1st, but it would happen in sometime in the first week of June where Congress meets and approves um, the deficit ceiling increase. But what's really going on behind the scenes is what does this mean for the market? Should there be more calamity between now and June 1st and or some agreement that is imminent that might come by, say, Friday or even over the weekend? The My interpretation of this is that last week we had a little sell off. If you can kind of see it, if I zoom in, this little sell-off here um, that occurred um, uh, just in the beginning of May was when the budget talks were starting to come together. And um, at that time, there was no talks. There was just no talks. Um, Joe Biden refused to uh, meet Kevin McCarthy, despite the outreach from McCarthy. Um, then when Biden did start to say, OK, let's talk and negotiate, the market started to move up, as you can see it here. I remember there was a pivotal day when um, they realized that maybe a deal was going to be reached. That was this day right here, uh, which was the uh, Friday the 5th. Seems like uh, just two Fridays ago. And we were talking on the AI circle the Wednesday before that. So two days before. Now, of course, here we are again. And today is Wednesday, another AI circle day. Um, just like I think this day was. And my point was, at that time, where was the market? Where is it going to go um, based on what most people think and what even I thought and where I can opine? At the end of the day, I felt and still do that the market is very vulnerable to some downside movement. The money that is sloshing around in the economy is preventing that from happen, rem happening, happening right now. So right now, I have to admit that I thought some of these corrections would occur before summer, um, even before June, and if not in June. Now, given the fact that all of these things have not matured as I expected um, before, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to say, I'm going to put that on pause and say, let's wait a little bit longer. I think the events that I'm looking for are near. And that means that at some time, even after they pass this agreement, the markets will realize that the two letters, AI, that hold up five stocks, these five right here, Meta, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google, these five stocks, the, essentially the FANG stocks, are accounting for all of the S&P gains this year. As we stand today, we stood two weeks ago. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is now down on the year. The Russell 2000 is down on the year. The, of course, the triple Q, the thing that represents the NASDAQ, of course, is going to be much higher on the year as evidenced by this. This is a year-to-date chart of that. And we see it's gone from about 268 to 335. And so that's an increase of about 70 points. That's about 25, 27% just in the highly weighted to the FANG stocks, triple Q. 
all the market's gains are coming from five to seven stocks, mostly five stocks, the FANG stocks. They have moved higher this year. Why? They represent those two beautiful letters, artificial in, for the A and the intelligence for the I, that is driving the market higher. The idea of AI changing the world we live in um, is very exciting this year. Um, admittedly, flip, we use that those two letters as well. We do have artificial intelligence and AKA machine learning that allows us to be able to try to predict the market. So those two letters right now have come into full play as if the world is now going to instantly turn over to a bunch of robots. And so the market as usual is getting ahead of that and buying these things. And so that's why these stocks are up. Those five stocks are accounting for all of the S&P 500's 7% gain year to date. So what does that mean in the coming weeks? Well, if the trend continues in these stocks, and let's go scroll through them very quick. Look at Meta year to date. Meta is literally up 50% more. Year to date, it's up 50%, but it's up from its lows, literally 150%. Microsoft, similar from its lows of around 216, it's three. 18, that's a 50, another 50% 50 gain. Apple, a little less, but from its lows, 126, it's up to 171, so that's about $50. So that's up about 40%. Amazon, from its lows, about 83, up to 120, or 116, is up at 16, $30 on 80. So that's up about 34%. So as you can see, these stocks, the ones that we all know, and we, by the way, love, um, we do not belong in any of these stocks right now. However, they could turn into buy signals in the future, but right now they are not. And that is holding up the S&P 500 in its entirety. Meanwhile, interest rates, let's go to that. Interest rates, as we all know, um, have, feel, have topped off now. It seems to be at about 5.2% on the short term one month T-bill. They are running at about 3.7% on the 10-year note, which is up markedly about 25 basis points also over the last three weeks since we spoke last. What does that mean? Well, that means that the yield curve continues to be inverted, but by the way, it's even more inverted. Inversion of the yield curve, I've heard you, uh, you probably heard this a million times, but in, even for me, Inversion of the yield curve also spells future recession. It has every time in the past. Now, I personally recognize that the past doesn't always predict the future. Whether we're using an algorithm or machine learning or even an opinion or any data, it doesn't necessarily reflect the future. The crazy thing that's happened that in this particular case, why we have an inverted yield curve and a market that is really done very little in the broader market, and we just saw five stocks rally, a market that is trying to re-evaluate itself under the, some new environment of AI. And these five stocks, the mega stocks of our time, the stocks that we all know, are literally holding up all of the market itself. Years ago, over 100 years ago, when the Dow Jones was formed, the stocks that would hold up the entire market were General Motors, General Electric, the companies Ford Motor Company, the companies that we all that founded the country. They were the staples of their time. Obviously, nobody thinks of those as the staples today. But today, everybody does recognize that Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, um, even Meta, do represent things that most of us in our lives touch in some way every day. So those are the stocks of our times. Can they carry the market higher by themselves? Yes, they have done that before. They have done that actually for many, many years. Literally, these five stocks have the ability to hold the entire market up. 
But there is a difference this time that we have to point out. And this gets a little bit complicated, but I'm going to do my best to put it in layman's terms. As the market goes higher, as for example, an Apple with a market cap now of about $2.7 trillion, as it goes higher and people buy it, it represents an even greater share of its influence on the S&P 500 because the S&P 500 is market cap weighted. In other words, the stocks with the most market cap get weighted the highest. So of course, these stocks are now filtering to the top, the FANG stocks. As they filter to the top, they actually create a cycle that makes them even more important. So as people buy just those stocks and nothing else, it can actually just hold the entire market up might have heard that, and I might have said this in the last meeting, the last AI circle, that two weeks ago, that these particular five stocks, had they not gone up the Dow right now, and they just stayed where they were at the beginning of the year, the Dow would be much further down in the year. It'd be down about 15%. And the S&P, without these five stocks, had they gone nowhere, would be down about 9%. In other words, these stocks account these five stocks account for the entire rally of the S&P 500 this year. And because they're not, for example, a big component of the Russell or the Dow Jones, that's why those two indices are lower on the year. So generally, when you see a yield, a yield curve that's inverted and you see just five stocks, no matter how influential they are, holding up the market, recognizing that other major indices are down yet these are up, do we have a strong market? I affirm and say, no, we do not. We have a very weak market, a market that is refusing to go down only because a few stocks are going up. It actually wants to go down. It doesn't want to go up. It wants to go down. It just is being influenced higher by those five stocks. So what does that mean for all of us? It means a delay. It means I feel that the these five stocks, their potential because of the AI buzzword this year and people wanting to have a piece of AI, that's their FOMO, their fear of missing out, are holding up the market. And it's just a matter of time before it all crumbles at some point. Sometime now I have to push it off at least two more months and say that this probably now will take till August to mature its way lower. In the meantime, in the meantime, everybody, I think we hang in there. AI data, for example, on our end, is becoming even more affirmed to be us to keep us out of the market. It seems that the higher we go, it doesn't seem to stop credit card expansion. It doesn't seem to stop credit card defaults. Those information that we get week to week um, the most recent week uh, was last Wednesday, we'll get more data today, is showing an even further expansion of credit card usage and even further expansion of credit card defaults. That plus interest rates creeping up again um, and a higher um, uh, Fed funds rate futures are now predicting a 30% chance that there will be another hike when most people think the hikes are done tells me that the market is very vulnerable um, to a downside move. Probably within the next AI circle, we'll be talking a, a little bit differently.